Setting up TypeScript with Express is quite tedious, and more so if you want to integrate SOD. So for this, I'll show you guys my way of setting it up alongside with a great Slint configuration. So create a directory and then open up your terminal and install the following dependencies. So TypeScript, pretty self-explanatory, then TS Node to compile our TypeScript to JavaScript code, and finally TS Config Paths. Once that's done, we can initialize the TypeScript configuration and I'll simply copy my configuration and replace everything. Now this configuration can be found under the description of this video, so make sure to check that out. So at a glance, we're simply setting up this TS node property, which is simply a way for TS node to be able to recognize this path configuration here. And what is this path? Well, it is simply a way to map a directory to an alias. So we're mapping the source directory to be this dollar sign instead, which means you do not need to use relative imports. All you have to do is reference this alias. And finally, we're including in the compilation process everything under the source directory alongside with our slint configuration file. So now we can install express sud and course. Now, course is optional, depends. Are you building a backend for a web application? You'll most likely need course. Otherwise, you may not need this. And now we need to install the types for these libraries. So, types express, then types for node, types for course, then prettier, nodemon, and slint. Once that's done, we can come here to the package.json and I'll copy these scripts. Again, you can find this under the description. So we're simply specifying a dev script, which is going to execute Nodemon. And Nodemon is simply a helper that is going to rerun your application or rather re-execute this main.cs file whenever it detects something has been modified. We're also specifying this flag right here, which is a way to tell Nodemon to only re-execute this main.cs file if any file with the TS extension has been modified. So say you write locally to a JSON file, that's not going to cause a rerun. Without this flag, it would. So it's best to have it like this. And finally, we have this prettier script which is simply a way to format everything with prettier and everything is denoted by this dot right here. So now we can add our dot prettier RC configuration file and I'll copy all of this. Now this is entirely up to you, but this is the configuration I like to use. Now that we have this, we can create a directory called the source and then our main.ts file. And for this, I'll copy the boilerplate code. So we're importing express all of the corresponding types. We're bootstrapping the application. Then we're using this express.json middleware, which is simply going to parse the request body into a usable JSON format. And then we define a basic handler and then we run our server. Now let's add the sod middleware so that we can throw sod errors within this handler and not have to worry about the success or failure of that check. So under source, I'll create a new folder called middlewares, and then I'll create a sod.middleware.ts file. And for this, I'll do the same, so copy everything and paste it here. Now this middleware is simply checking the errors that it receives. It checks if the error extends from sod, then it simply returns a 400 so bad request and the body will contain the error itself. So error.flatten, which is a method from sod that is going to make the error more readable, basically. Then we have this check if the error extends from the base class error which is the inbuilt one. So when you use throw new error, this one, it is going to simply return the status code if you provide one. Otherwise, it will return 400 bad request, and then the body will contain the message of the error. And if none of these two are met, it is simply going to return a 500. So internal server error. 
So now that we have this middleware, we can come here after this get and simply use the sod middleware. And now that we have this middleware, we can use const body schema is equal to z dot object. Let's say it's going to contain a name. And now we can simply say body schema dot parse the request dot body. And sod will throw an error if this parse fails. So if the body doesn't correspond to this schema. And this middleware will basically catch this error right here and will simply return a 400 with the error, as simple as that. And this is incredibly useful because now you do not need to wrap this into a try catch block or even use the safe parse and then say result, if result that success and so on and so forth which makes the code way more concise and way more readable. So now the last step is to configure Slint. So I'll open up my terminal and install as a dev dependency the Slint plugins. So for TypeScript and then for Prettier. And once we have this, I'll create a new file, slintrc.cjs. So this extension is for common.js, which means that we're going to be using require instead of the import export syntax. And I'll copy everything and paste it here. So now this is a very extensive Slint configuration file. You can check everything yourself. But from the outset, we can see that we have these consistent type imports. So that means that if I come here and get rid of this type annotation, it is going to yell at us because we're only using request as a type, not as a value. So now we can use the quick fix. And as we can see, it added this type inline, which comes from this prefer fix. So inline type imports. We have no unused bars and a lot more rules but we get another error. Result is assigned a value, but it's never read. So to fix this, let's say result and then response dot status, let's say 200 dot JSON, and we'll send hello world and then the original body. Or we can actually manipulate this to use the trim. And now let's test this. I'll come here and I'll run the dev script, as we can see, it is running on port 5000. So now I'll open up the Thunder client. I'll create a new request to localhost 5000. If I click send, we get an error. So for 100, but request name is required. This comes from this SOD schema. But now if I come here to the body and pass in a name, let's say ASD with a lot of spaces, click send. The output is streamed and everything works fine. What if I get rid of an S, click send. String must contain at least three characters. So as we can see, everything is working perfectly fine. So now with this configuration, you can start building your express APIs. Thank you for watching. If this video helped you or you want to see similar content, make sure to subscribe. See ya.